Okay, we've got a question about an office and there are 10 incoming phone calls per hour on average and we're interested in the time between one call arriving and the next. Okay, so we are um, waiting before the first occurrence of something occurring. Okay, so we do need to um, uh, set up an exponential distribution because part A tells us we're going to do that. But in part A, we've got to uh, actually use our knowledge of when the exponential distribution applies. So the exponential distribution applies when we are waiting for the uh, first occurrence or the next occurrence of something where the events are occurring um, independently and at a constant average rate as with a Poisson distribution. So that's my two assumptions. First assumption, calls occur independently. And secondly, they occur at a constant average rate. I mean, it kind of helps us towards the second one because it says there's an average of 10 per hour, but it doesn't tell us that that average is constant throughout the day. Remember, assumptions should be things you haven't already been told. So we haven't been told these two things already. That was part A. Now, assuming those assumptions are correct, which we're going to do for the rest of the question, we need to state the value of lambda. I'm going to show you two ways of doing part B. There is a quick way, which is great if you remember it, and there is a slow and reliable way, which I'm going to start with, which starts off in the formula book, which has two useful pieces of information about exponential distributions. It pretends to have three useful pieces, but this one is completely useless. You never look at this. Okay, these are the useful pieces of information. We'll come to the variance later, but for now, the mean is 1 over lambda. So if I know what the mean is, I can work out what lambda is. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, well, common sense tells me that the mean wait time, if they're arriving at the rate of 10 per hour, then on average, I'm going to have to wait one-tenth of an hour. Okay, because 10 of them are arriving on average an hour. So the average wait is a tenth of an hour. So my mean wait time is a tenth of an hour, but uh, the formula from the formula book was that the mean was one over lambda. So the expectation of x, another name for the mean, is 1 over lambda, and that equals 1 tenth. Okay, so that tells me that the parameter lambda that I want, that's the answer to the question. It asks us to find out what lambda should be. There we go. Um, so lambda has to equal 10. So that's my answer. So that was the slow way. So the quick way was even quicker than that. The quick way revolves around knowing that this kind of distribution is very very related to Poisson distributions, okay? It's the same kind of events. These two conditions are the same as for a Poisson. Now, if I was doing this for the one hour, if I was doing this with a Poisson, then the mean for an hour is 10, so my lambda for the Poisson would be 10, and the exponential distribution, as long as the time interval is one hour, then the mean, the lambda for your um, exponential distribution, corresponds with the lambda for your Poisson. Okay, so that would be the quick way to do it, but I'm happy with the slow and reliable way. Okay, let's go on to part C of the question. So now we've got to get the mean and the standard deviation. Okay, so for part C, I've already done the mean. So this may feel a little bit odd, but remember that there was that other way of getting the lambda. Okay, I now do want the mean, so I'm going to state the formula again. 1 over lambda, which is 1 over lambda is 10, 1 over 10, so the mean is 0.1. Okay, now the standard deviation, I have to go via the variance, okay? Be always very careful. Is it a standard deviation or is it a variance? So my formula for variance, here it is in the formula book, variance of an exponential is 1 over lambda squared. So variance 1 over lambda squared equals uh, 1 over 10 squared, 1 over 10 squared, which is uh, 1 over 100. Okay, but I was not asked for the variance, I was asked for the standard deviation. So the standard deviation is the square root of the variance, which is the square root of 1 over 100, which you can do on your calculator if you like, but it's 0 0.1 again, it's a tenth again. Okay, now this illustrates this is always true for this distribution. The mean is always the same as the standard deviation, which might kind of remind you of a Poisson, but it's not the same, because with a Poisson distribution, the mean is always the same as the variance. They're both lambda. With the exponential distribution, the mean is always the same as the standard deviation, and they're both 1 over lambda. Okay, so it's a bit different. Anyhow, I've done part C. I've got two good answers for the mean and for the standard deviation. Now I've got to find some probabilities in part D. I've got to do the probability of being less than 15 minutes and more than 10 minutes and between 3 and 5 minutes. Okay, so 
we do this, we can visualize this as areas, but unlike the rectangular distribution, it's not just the area of an easy shape. So we need the formula for probability. So the probability formula for x being less than or equal to a particular value of x. Now this is not in the formula book. In particular, this formula here for the probability density function, although it looks a little bit like the correct formula, it is not the correct formula and it will give you all the wrong answers. So we ignore this value, okay? You can't deface the formula book you have to use in the exam, otherwise I'd have it crossed out in all of the formula books. Never ever look at this, okay? The formula, and you have to memorize it, the formula for the probability of being less than or equal to the value of x is 1 minus the number e to the power of minus lambda times that x. And what we have to do is to apply that formula to these probabilities listed up here. So the first one is less than 15 minutes. Okay, so for the so in part dotty one, I want the probability of being less than 15 minutes. Now two things going on here. Firstly, this says less than or equal to, so you might not be worried about the fact that it's less than 15 minutes. But remember, the probability of being exactly 15 minutes, this is a continuous measurement, so the probability of being exactly 15 is zero. Okay, so I don't need to worry about that. What I do need to worry about, though, is that um, it's now started talking about minutes, but our, our lambda was based on a rate of, going right the way back to the beginning, beginning of the question, it's based on... Uh, 10 calls per hour, okay? So they sneakily changed the units of time. So we need to keep working in hours if we want this to work out correctly, okay? So going back to our work down here, all right, the probability of being less than or equal to 15 minutes is the probability that x is less than, okay, 15 minutes expressed as hours. So that's 15 over 60, 15 uh, minutes is 15 sixtieths of an hour, and that's a quarter of an hour. So this is going to be uh, the probability of x being less than 0 0.25, and I can treat that the same as I would probability of x being less than or equal to 0 0.25. So that means I've got my 0 0.25 is going to be my x in this formula, and the lambda is going to be what lambda's always been, 10. Okay? So, uh, I'm just going to substitute in, so 1 minus e to the power of minus lambda times x. And lambda is 10, so that's a 10 here, and x is 0.25, so this is a 0.25 here. Okay, so I have to do 1 minus uh, e to the power of, well I could type this straight into my calculator. So you do need to know where to find e, I need to be in just, um, I need to be in mode... Uh, 1 for an ordinary calculation, and I need to do 1 minus, okay, uh, e to the power of. Now, uh, the easiest e to use is this one here, shift, and then this button that says, um, this button here that says what you might think is in, but it's actually lun, okay, but can you see above that it says e to the power of. So if I press that, it will give me e, and it knows I want to do e to the power of something. And the power of e I want to do is, I can type in minus 10, times 0.25. So in fact, I don't need to do um, any more calculation. I can just say the answer is 0 0.91791. And I've got my answer to the first part. Okay. All right. Next part of the question. So going back to that, said up here, more than 10 minutes. Okay. So now I've got to think, now a sketch might help all right, okay, because this formula is only for working out the probability of being less than or less than or equal to something, yeah? So if I want the probability that it's more than 10 minutes, then I can draw my picture. The picture for the exponential distribution, okay, is always a graph that kind of slopes down like this. But if you don't draw it accurately, it's not going to stop it being useful to you. Um, as long as we get the, the, the sense of what's going on on the time axis right. So this was more than 10 minutes. So I've got a time of 10 minutes, and I want to be more than 10 minutes. Okay? But I'm going to find that, uh, like we did really with um, some of our other distributions, just by using the fact the total area is 1. So I'm going to be doing 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 10. Okay, so 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 10. Well, the probability of x being less than or equal to 10, let's look at that. I can do exactly the same way um, that I did with the 15 minutes. Oh, but it's 10 minutes. So it's not 10 uh, hours, it's 10 sixtieths of an hour. 
This is 10 sixtieths here, so the probability of x being less than or equal to 10 over 60. Okay, well that's going to be 1 minus e to the power of minus 10 times the 10 over 60. Okay, which I can do on my calculator. I can do that very easily because I can um, just replay that previous answer and change the 0 0.25 into 10 divided by 60. Could have simplified that, but I haven't bothered. And I get 0 0.8111112. So that, this is 0 0.831s and then a 2. Okay, but that's not my final answer. That's the probability of, okay, this bit that I don't want. So the probability I've just found is the probability of being less than or equal to because the formula that we're told to learn is always the formula of being less than or equal to. Okay, so I need to take this answer away from 1. So the probability of uh, more than 10 minutes Okay, it's 1 minus 0 0.81112, which is 0 0.18888. How nice. Okay, so that's the probability we need for this one. Now, if you were really smart, you could notice that actually I've done two takings. Well, there's a, t a one takeaway in the formula, and then I took the answer away from one. So actually, just this part of the formula on its own would have given me the right answer. Okay, if you're smart enough to spot that, then fine. But um, the way that I've shown you to do it there is reliable, so there's no need to worry really about doing anything else. Okay? And then finally, for D part 3, so here we are, we want the, the probability of being between 3 and 5 minutes. So we need a picture again for part 3. Okay? Uh, we need to be between 3 and 5 minutes. So on my downy slopey curvy thing, I want to be between 3 minutes. And five minutes, okay? All right, but I've got to remember these are in hours. So it's three sixtieths of an hour and five sixtieths of an hour, and I want this probability here. But my formula only tells me the probability of being less than or equal to a particular value, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out all of this area up to five sixtieths. So I want the probability of x being less than or equal to five over 60, okay? But then I'm going to remove the area I don't want. So this black area over here, I don't want that. So I'm going to remove that. So I'm going to do minus the probability of x being less than or equal to 3 over 60. And I'm going to work out each of these the same way as I did before. Okay. So in fact, right, I'm actually just going to adapt what I did on the calculator. So this is what I did for 10 minutes. So I had a 10 divided by 60 in it. If I just change that 10 to a, first of all, we'll have the first one I want, which is, the first one I want is 5 sixtieths. So I'm going to change the 10 to a 5. Yeah, it's still being divided by 60. So that answer is 0 0.56540. And I need to take away um, the other one, which has got a 3 on top of the 60. So that should be a 3. And that's uh, 0 0.39347. And I need to do that subtraction. So I need to do 0 0.56540 minus the, oh, I'll miss out the point, minus the previous answer I had. It's just up on the screen. So that subtraction gives an answer of 0 0.17193. That's my final answer. And I finished part D. Okay. Part E of the question. Let's have a look at what that says. Here's part uh, E about the boss. Okay. The boss comes into the office five minutes after the phone last rang. Okay. Uh, and stays until it rings again. And it says write down. It says it in bold, which the exam questions won't, but they will say write down. And it means that there's hardly any work to do. You just have to use your brain. So what's the possibility the boss has to wait between three and five minutes? Okay. Well, look, I've just worked out the probability of there being between three and five minutes between calls. Okay. But this isn't that because this is, there's already been five minutes since the last call. So is that going to affect the probability of how long I have to wait? Well, the answer is no, it's not. Because all the way back in part A of the question, when we look at our assumptions, okay, none of this work makes any kind of sense, part A of the question, there we go, unless the calls are occurring independently 
which means it doesn't matter about previous calls. They have no effect on the probability that a call is now going to happen. Okay, so this is a write down question because we've already done the work for the answer. Okay, we worked out here the probability the wait would be between three minutes and five minutes, and it makes no difference whatsoever whether at the start of our timing the phone has just rung or whether it's been five minutes since the last call. Because they're independent, we can just use the same method. So for part E, the answer is just 0 0.17193. It's a write down question, so the answer just appearing is what's expected. So that's dealt with that one. And then finally, we have part F, which is verify. Verify means check. Okay? So it means that essentially they're telling me answer, an answer or answers that I can check rather than I have to get for myself. The median, the median time. Now we've met medians before. Specifically, we've met medians because we know the probability on any kind of distribution, the probability of being each side of the median is 0.5. So this is the wrong shape for an exponential distribution. doesn't matter what shape it is. The median is the, the, the middle value that has a 0.5 uh, uh, chance of being on either side. Okay? And for a non-symmetrical um, distribution, which exponential definitely is, the median won't be in the same position as the mean. Okay? So uh, I need to use this probability um, of 0.5. And, and just let me take you back to the sign test. In S, um, earlier in the course, you did a sign test where you uh, knew that the probability of being more than the median or less than the median should be 0 0.5. So that's the fact we're using. So we're trying to find the value, okay? Shape doesn't look like this. On part F, okay? We are trying to find on our exponential distribution, okay? Um, the value here, we don't know what it is, where this is 0 0.5. And this is 0 0.5, okay? Now, to find that value, because of the, 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 the function we've got, the, the formula we've got, it's got that E in it. And you can't rearrange that, okay? Take some sophisticated maths to be able to rearrange that formula. So they have to tell you the answer. And they have told us the answer. They've told us to show that the answer is between 4.2 and it should say, I think, 4.3 minutes. I'll make sure that's correct in the booklet by the time you get hold of it. So, that means that we can actually work out some probabilities, okay? Instead of finding out what this is, I'm going to say, oh, okay, suppose this was uh, um, not point, uh, well, it was 4.2 minutes. Okay, I've got to do the normal thing. I've got to use hours. So, if I work out the probability of being less than 4.2 minutes, so that means I have to change this to 4.2 divided by 60, not 4.5, 4.2, okay? That's the probability of being uh, less than or equal to 4.2 minutes. So the probability of uh, x being less than or equal to 4.2, okay, equals 0 0.5034. And we'll notice that this is suspiciously close to a half, okay? 4.2 doesn't give me a probability of exactly a half. What this shows is actually 4.2 is just a little bit too big. So I must have uh, miscorrected the question. It must be that the correct question that it'll appear when you get it is 4.1 and 4.2 minutes. Let's just check that. Let's find out the probability of x being less than or equal to 4.1 minutes. Okay, so I can cunningly just put 4.1 in the same formula again. Okay, gone too far. Delete one. Bang. Okay. And that is 0 0.49507. Okay? All right? And what we can see is that I've got two numbers here. Remember, the probability I'd really like to be on either side of the median is a half. Okay? For one of them, I've got this probability as being a bit less than a half. The other one, it's a little bit more. So, um, what we can say is that uh, 0.5 is between... 0.503 and 0.495. So the median is between the two values we were given, which were 4.1 and 4.2, which I promise you will be the values that appear in the question in the booklet you're given.